What's going on, nerds? We're back for the main show. We missed a week. Bill's back, and we got Chelsea back. How's it going? Hey, everybody. How goes it? Today we're talking serial killers. Dum, dum, dum. You don't have a bum, bum, bum? Not yet. I need need, need a, yeah. That would have been perfect. Bill dropping the ball. That's fine. Dropping these balls. These balls. Yeah, we just dropped. Speaking of dropping these balls. We just released a really good episode uh, this week, so go check that out. Yeah, you can find everything on thecomiczone.com, best place to find all mm-hmm. social media links. Best place to find that in every episode we've ever done. And done. You can subscribe done. to whatever service you like. Yep. Whatever tickles your fancy. How you doing? Not too bad. Just, you know, getting ready to get my new puppy this Friday. What? Super excited about that. Nice. She's my precious little baby. And, you know, I'm excited that it's October. It is spooky season. It's my favorite month. I love Halloween, horror movies, plus all these new serial killer shows and documentaries coming out are, you know, really getting my goat. I'm loving it. So when we originally started talking about podcasting, you almost wanted to start a true crime podcast of your own. Yes. So this has been something off off podcast we've spoken about many a time very true and i i listen to uh one in particular called true crime all the time that i love so i i'm a big fan of murder podcasts you know i'm all about that i'm your typical you know basic white woman that loves her pumpkin spice lattes and serial killers (laughs) just in time for halloween exactly Before we get into serial killers, though, let's get into check this shit out. There's quite a bit of shit that happened this week. Uh, starting off, we got the news that Hugh Jackman is coming back as Wolverine and Deadpool. Wolverine. Wee! Super stoked. I love me some Hugh Jackman. Hell yeah, he's gonna. It's gonna be amazing. It is gonna be amazing. I used to have a wallpaper of him playing golf in a towel on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> So just, my love runs That's weird. Deep, Me okay. too. <laughs> you too. I never yeah. thought anybody else would have done that. See, I'm older. It was a poster above my bed. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, you had <laughs> like old above. <laughs> yeah, like on the, on the ceiling, ceiling. <laughs> right above it. <laughs> oh Jesus! No, but that's really s- sick that he's coming back. It is badass. I'm pretty stoked about that. I think that is going to be. I wonder awesome. if Josh Brolin will be a part of it too. That'd be a sick, like trio. Those three together. Who's who's he again? The um, cable. Cable. Mm-hmm. Okay, gotcha. And wasn't he also Thanos? Yeah. Yep. And that would be funny too because then or they could they could Paul. totally bring that up and he'd be they could you know he and the, he would be the only one that sees it. Fucking uh, Deadpool. Yeah. I'm sure they'll do. Well, I would hope they would do a lot of that. You know, making references to. The other movies and the other characters that they have played, you know, I mean, it's Deadpool, so anything is possible with that. Well, because he already called him Thanos in Deadpool too, so that's right. Did he? It's been yeah, such right. a long time. He calls him Thanos at one point. Does he? I'll have to watch it again. I haven't seen that movie probably since around you know when it came out, but mm-hmm. I mean, how long ago was that? Yes. 2017 maybe yeah you gotta look it up now yeah i was gonna say now i gotta google it because you gotta come with facts i do have to come with facts okay if you're uh on top of that we got the trailer for wakanda forever that looks fucking incredible coming out soon it's gonna be next month next month which so we all gotta set up and go together they said on the trailer that tickets are now available but they're not available through yo movies yet as of the time of this recording um, it's not available. You can't buy them here in Casper. Yep, because I've been keeping an eye out on it. So, I mean, as soon as they're available, we'll definitely start that group text message yeah. of, you know, hey, bitches, we got to buy tickets. So let's do this. Yep. Because yep. that movie looks amazing. What'd you have on the date through? 2018. Okay. It feels, I guess it just feels like it's been longer. S- yeah, it well, really does. I mean, COVID. that's true. COVID really fucked up a lot of things in that sense i feel like i messed up the timeline altogether it has and i feel like i've kind of lost that like the perception of when they came out you know kind of thing because i've seen all of them and quite a few times but it's been a hot minute since i've seen the deadpool movies 
And a lot has come out since then, too. A lot has a lot, come out. I mean, that's when all the streaming service went gangbusters with everything. And I wonder if they're going to use him traveling through time at the end of the movie as how he jumps through the multiverse and ends up in ours. I don't think they have to take anything that serious. Well, sure, they yeah, explain I mean, it somehow. I mean, but... It's Marvel. They haven't been explaining shit to us, okay? <laughs> and I think that's with Wakanda Forever. That's what I'm hoping we're going to get a little bit I just bit hope of. we get some sort of movement forward. because So I haven't watched She-Hulk from last week, so I don't know what that episode entailed. I'm a little behind, I'm however. I'm behind, too, on that. As we've gone through the show, though, we're not really... Get you know, it's more or less, I'd say, kind of like a she Hulk almost sitcom in a sense, you know. Mm -hmm. And I like it, I enjoy the show, I love Jennifer Walters, I'm I'm enjoying it, but at the same time, too, I'm like, okay, well, what is the point of all of it? Where where are we taking it? So, I saw an interview somewhere that they were talking about this phase of the MCU is only a reaction to what happened in Endgame, and that we're not, and I think we should. And, and and that's been very disheartening to all of us, you know, big fans is we want that per some sort of a semblance of where is this going? And we haven't got anything. That's right. not true and, at and all. That's not true at all. I think Maybe we've little, gotten certain like things. Like in the MCU overall, sure. I mean, Loki pointed exactly where it's going. But that was so early on. Okay. Every movie really hasn't. Exactly. It's like we, like I well, said, It doesn't you have know. to be every movie. And no. not, not every movie has to tie into the overall, like, in-game scenario. It's just that I feel like we are being guinea pigs. So do I. That we're I... just there. They're testing out which character is going to last and which aren't. Um, yeah. But you know, it is what it is, and you know, I'm glad they're still making movies and Same. still cranking out that content. Speaking but, of like movies, though, like we were saying, Wakanda Forever, and then did you notice uh, somebody mentioned Ironheart in yeah. the trailer, and it showed somebody building a a, a suit like Tony. And then that suit flying away at one point. And then Namor with those like Kid Icarus kind of leg yeah, his, flying his, things. Yeah, his ankle wings. He always had those. I Never hope they make... I, me either. I'm not a fan of his. So I hope they make him better in the movies. Because in literally every comic I've read with him in it, I'm like, God, can we, he's just the Aquaman of Marvel. <laughs> well, I just by the trailer, I think they're going in the right direction aesthetically. I do too. I agree with that. I, I so. really enjoyed the way he looked. So, I mean, I guess that always makes me hopeful when I'm like, okay, you know, so their look is promising, but hopefully the character is better than what we get in the comics, I would hope. Yeah, right. I think he's, uh, I always liked him in the comics and he, I, I don't see him as uh, Marvel's Aquaman, um, but that's just me. I've been only. I've I always not, liked him, and I always liked the Fantastic Four, and like I've that been was read all. too many of Namor in comics, and the ones that I have read were disappointing. But I also know, like King and Black, that's not the best representation of a lot of the superheroes, unless it was written by Donny Cates. Right. True story. On top of that, like uh, as we move along and check this shit out, um, obviously we're talking serial killers, so. The Jeffrey Dahmer show, uh, Monster, isn't it? Yep. Uh, I just finished up the whole show a couple days ago. Don't spoil it for me because I still have four episodes left. Okay, I won't. I'm, I'm pretty. Like, I'm a little far behind. Too. That kind of sucks because I kind of wanted to talk about it. I mean, I guess we could because the truth of the matter is, you're not going to spoil anything for me. It's a true story. Yeah, we all, I mean, uh, we all... all know what happened. Mm -hmm. So. That show, we were talking with uh, Beth upstairs before we recorded about it, and just those first couple episodes are so fucked up, man. They are fucked it's... up, but you know what? He was. And, it's, and... and it's, what's messed up is that's watering it down. Well, and it is, too, because, you know... From when, reality. Well, and when they show us, you know, the show, obviously, like, we know that he, he cut people up. He burned them in acid. He ate them, all that stuff. But I, I'm, 
I'm kind of glad that they don't show the gory graphic details of that in the show. They um, they definitely allude to it and you know what he was doing, but I don't need to actually see him slicing somebody's leg off. Well, what, what makes it creepy isn't that. It's the he makes it creepy just he the way was he creepy. is. And like him laying on the dude's chest and just like. But that's what I drink mean. Drink it. Drink it. Just drink it. I'd be like, uh, no. That's, but I mean, that's what he did, you know, aside from um, the shit with his neighbor, because that is, it's definitely fabricated. She lived in another building. Um, she wasn't right next door to him, but she did call the cops on him numerous times. Um, and he did feed his neighbor sandwiches. So, and they even say, well, we probably ain't human at some point. So, I mean, aside from kind of the, the fabrication of that, Everything in that show is like spot on the truth. It you know, it it's kind of crazy to me mm-hmm. how well they did it. So one meme that's kind of cracked me up is man, this uh sequel to oh crap, now is it Napoleon Dynamite? Napoleon Dynamite yeah. got way dark because <laughs> he oh, heck no. I mean, yeah, he, he is. God, he grandma. <laughs> like, scarily, just his flatness is, but that's like that creepy part and that kind of uh, psychopath emotionless blank soul or exactly he wasn't somebody like ted bundy who could turn on that charm at the flip of a switch and make you think he's a complete because he would go pick up dudes like all the time so he must have been had some charisma somewhere i mean I think so. You know, I there is actually I don't know if you've ever heard of the moth, but there is a story on there that this guy talks about where he really wanted this attractive blonde guy that always smelled like chocolate that he saw in the clubs and stuff like that. And so Jeffrey Dahmer, you know, he was an attractive looking dude to two people back then. I mean, granted, not to me. However, you know, he had that appearance and he didn't necessarily like come off as a super weirdo to people which i mean helped him you know in a sense and at least um, at least at first at least at first you know i think he started letting it slip obviously later on but i i don't really think he shifted back and forth to these different personalities like ted bundy did in my opinion i think uh the crazy thing about him is like the he wasn't exactly a careful person about it. Like, no, he, he not was, at all. And the only reason he got away with it was that the cops didn't give a fuck because the people he was doing it to were black or minorities. Yep. Gay. And they're like, they didn't want to like in the they show, were like people of neighbor, color and they were gay. That's like, yeah, and that's yep. in in uh, his neighbor calling the cops over fifty times and shit, and then well, them not coming at all. They never came. No, they didn't. And even when they did, they took his victim back to him. Well, and even when we were watching it, my hubs had to ask me that. He's like, is that true? Did they really bring that kid back to him? And I said, yes, they absolutely did. And he, they don't show this on the show, but that kid, he was bleeding from all of his downstairs areas, like pretty graphic. And the cops are just like, oh, he's just drunk. Just, Just send him back with Jeff. And you're like... Why in the fuck would you do that? Mm -hmm. They didn't want that AIDS in their cop car. No. And did you know when they said that about needing deloused? The cops really did say that when they radioed in. That is true to word. And it is so fucked up to me on so many levels. That was the the downside of the AIDS epidemic at that point in time. And and really shows our culture and honestly how he is able to get away with it, too. That's what I mean. It's like he the only reason. He was a uh, uh, had so many victims is because he was allowed to. Yeah, exactly. He's not somebody like Ted Bundy or who went after one of the ones like or BTK. co-eds or something. Well, even BTK though he went out, he didn't discriminate. He went after. Oh kids, no, I'm men. saying he was he was careful and very smart about oh, very. how he did shit until the end. Obviously, right. But, I mean, he was very meticulous and careful. Somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer, he just did his thing and well, even, nobody cared. Well, no, even drugging people at the bathhouses and stuff. Like, yes, he got banned from them. He was still able to continue on. I mean, I'm sure people at Club 219 knew that. And he still went there. People still went home with him. Mm-hmm. You know, it's... Well, it's like the grandma. It's like, I think she saw it, but she didn't want to see it. Yeah, that's she what didn't I want think, to see the She knew it was fucking weird. But she didn't really want to take the deep dive and 
figure out well, how. Kind of like with like Ted Bundy's girlfriend, for example. You know, she was with him for a long time. And even after he went to prison, I think there was still a part of her that was in love with him in, in a weird, fucked up kind of way, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that they had a lot of, a lot of those serial killers had family members that knew something was off, I believe, but just didn't want to see it. Because even look at Lionel Dahmer. He loved his son, despite what, like, despite what, that was his kid, you know? So he almost reminded me of the dad in Dexter. Yeah. Like, I almost wonder if the the writer of Dexter kind of pulled from him, from him, because it's like, at least, or I don't know if the, the film now pulled you know, who knows what's the true reflection of. Well, and his, I mean, his dad did take him to, you know, he was into roadkill and wanted to experiment with it. And well, he thought it was a taxidermy thing. Though. Well, yeah, because yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I've done taxidermy, you know, I've I've picked up roadkill, you know, but and I've cut open animals and stuff. That doesn't mean I want to cut open people, though, you know. So I think, you know, he thought I'm bonding with my son. Yeah. I'm, you know. Encouraging a career Encur- path. Yeah, encouraging either a career path or a hobby. Because he knows he's awkward. <laughs> yes, yeah, he so was like, awkward okay, and weird and had a mom who just, you know, she suffered from issues. Well, and she, she was had, fucking crazy. Well, she had postpartum psychosis, though, too. And back in the time, they didn't know. Like it shows later in that episode when she's older and they tell her, yeah, you've been diagnosed with, you know, postpartum depression nobody knew about that back then and nobody really cared either and you saw that with the way the doctor talked to her so i i feel for her in a sense too that she probably inadvertently totally fucked up her child and really didn't mean to when she wasn't she couldn't have the help that like women have now when they struggle with that you know Mm -hmm. well and people are just more open about things i think when talking about that kind of shit I mean, on the last episode uh, that we just did on uh, Dragging the, These Balls, I mean, we got really into, like, talking about mental health and how important it is to talk about shit. Well, it is, too, because, you know, it's, I mean, mental health is a huge aspect when you look back at these serial killers and how they grew up and how they were treated and, you know, their mental health wasn't great and they didn't have those resources back then. It was either, you know you buck the fuck up and get through it or they consider you crazy and you get thrown into a mental institute, especially in the sixties and seventies, I would say probably not so much as time went on. Didn't somebody, didn't Ted Bundy though? He had a pretty normal childhood. No, he did not. Didn't he? I thought he did. No. So for the longest time he was lied to, they told him that his mom was his aunt because she had him out of wedlock. They sent her away Mm. to a home to have him. And then she ended up, She was living with her parents and his grandfather was extremely abusive when his aunt was, I don't remember, she was staying with them and she woke up to three-year-old Ted with knives all around her, around the couch. Like he took the whole block of knives and had them around her, like around the couch and other weird shit. Like people think he grew up normal, but if you really research it, he didn't. Well, I watched the... The Ted Bundy tapes? The tapes thing. That was a while ago though, probably like two years ago, so... The crazy thing about him is that he escaped from jail or escaped from the courthouse twice. That's twice. twice. That's what I always he found got out of his cell. He climbed him. up through the. He the, he was the, smart. He climbed up through the light fixture. Yeah, and then he, he lost all that weight. And so then he, he and then the other time he jumped out the library window at the courthouse. Yep. In Aspen, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It which, was in Aspen, Colorado, which I believe he killed six people there. Yeah, and then he like had nowhere to go. There was one way in and out of town, and then. Off into the wilderness. But isn't it insane that he man- he flew and like rode buses and stuff and managed to get clear across the country to Florida with nobody knowing? <laughs> like, no, not in that instance when he got out of the. Are you talking about when he first escaped the jail and was in the wilderness for a week and had to turn himself uh, back in? Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, that time he didn't think about what he was doing and got. He had to go back. Right, he absolutely had to or he wouldn't have survived. And let's face it, Ted Bundy wanted to live no matter what cost. Mm -hmm. And and his, his, the trial footage, you know, Mm -hmm. when he's like representing himself and shit, what a circus that That, shit was. It was a shit show, that whole, the trial. That dude was an egomaniac to the extreme. 
oh, he totally was. But, uh, you know what I mean? He had all these young girls coming to the courthouse, like little fangirls oh, watching yeah. him, just like Richard Ramirez, which just blows my mind that anybody could be like, oh. They didn't do that, you know. Just look at it. I don't it's like, think yeah, it's pure like, evil. I don't think it's the, they didn't do that. It's like it's almost like they view him as an alpha, somebody that would could can kill and will kill, and somebody who's strong and that could, would protect. It's like he'll kill anybody but me. Like I could, I could get him to not kill me, but and then they see him as like a strong. Like alpha male in a weird way. Well, and with, you know, with Bundy and Ramirez, women thought they were attractive. I mean, chicks sent Ramirez lingerie photos and nude photos in prison all the time. They didn't care that he was a killer. They're like, oh. People he's did hot. it to Jeffrey Dahmer, too. Which is so, it just baffles me. I think Dahmer wanted to die, though, truthfully. Yeah, he did. Show, and he we were he... talking about that is mm -hmm. he. It's like you look at John Wayne Gacy, he lied up until the very end about doing anything. Like he didn't ever like just spell it out. But as soon as they caught Jeff Dahmer, he told them everything. He never held back and he said he wanted to be executed. That is why I find him to be one of the Yes, one of the most interesting because he like had remorse almost. Almost remorse, mm. but he knew he was mm. fucked up. And he deserved to die? Yes, he, he could admit to it, whereas Ted Bundy used every fucking lifeline he had yeah. to, you know, to keep pushing off his execution. But then you also have people like Ed Kemper. Yeah, once, that's who I was just going to Once he killed his mom, he turned himself in, didn't kill anybody else. So it, you know... It, did he say he wanted to? Kill his mom? Yeah. Yes. No, I'm saying, did he want to kill more people and turn himself in to stop that, or... No, he just killed his mom and was like, well, I'm done. I don't want to kill anybody anymore and turned himself in as the co-ed killer. And now he reads books for the blind in prison. He does a bunch of audio books, um, I guess, started. Um, co-ed killer? I don't, what do you mean? He killed co-eds on campus in California. He killed six. Oh, and his last victim was his mom? Yes. He okay. killed her, ripped out her voice box, put it down the garbage disposal. Hmm. He did sexual acts on her head, like all kinds of crazy stuff. And he was fucking pissed at her, huh? Uh, you should watch Mind Hunter on Netflix. Yes, you should. It's, is that uh, about they, him? They, so it's it's about him. So it's, it's about the serial killer profiling of the FBI kind in of the seventies, like the start birth, of it. Mm -hmm. And how the, the cops then kind of made it into that profiling thing like you see in like a CSI kind of show now. Mm. But like this is their motive. They go after, you know, between 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five blonde chicks with blue eyes or, you know, whatever. And um, Kemper was one of the first ones to kind of talk to, to be, them to be about it. And, and they started he helping very, stuff together. He was very open with them as well. Kemper was open. Um, Dahmer was very open. But then you have ones, you know, that... John Wayne Gacy, like I said, who never fully admitted to anything. He didn't, and then there is also a, there's another documentary series about him on, I want to say it's Discovery Plus, where, according to him, he was a huge part of a child sex trafficking ring between politicians and celebrities. As a and, kid? No, or, when he, oh, when oh, he no, was no, killing no. all those boys and stuff, he even told people there's way more to this than you have any idea, and they, they connected him with some other people that were involved with the politicians and stuff like that. You'd have to watch the documentary He was series. super involved in, like, the community and shit, mm -hmm. too. With the JCs and the Democratic Party. He, like, knew everybody. Which is crazy, too. Look at how he got away with it for so long. He killed 33 people, and nobody had any idea, you know? And He's, he was careful, though, compared to, like, somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer. Mm -hmm. A little more careful. He tried to hide his shit. He tried to hide it, but when you have five of your workers go missing, yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like he wasn't at that. Smart I, I wouldn't with... say he was the most careful, but he was more careful, a little more careful than somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer. And then I think somebody like BTK is like the extreme of super careful, uh, other than like people that they've just never caught. Well, yeah, and I mean, look at somebody like <laughs> Gary Ridgway who wasn't careful at all. Killed 46, 47 women, and it took them until 2005 when we had DNA testing to be able to catch him, you know? So I don't necessarily think being careful 
or not being careful really determines i think it depends truthfully on who you are going after you know i mean and like the time well yeah because gary ridgeway it. he was going after prostitutes you know i mean they or rodney that, Al- alcala it's got to yes. be way harder to be serial killing these days you would, oh you most would think, def you would think you would think but maybe not maybe not at all it's like you said it depends on who you're killing if you're killing homeless people nobody cares yeah, if you're Maybe. killing homeless people or, you know, like I said, you know, if you're killing prostitutes that live that transient lifestyle where shit does happen to them, you know, whether, you know, serial killer or not, they're just like, well, oh, another one went missing. What do you do about it? You know, it's sad, but it's the truth. Maybe that's just, uh, you know, nature to feel like, oh, they wouldn't be able to do it so easy now, but maybe it's just as easy. You go after the same kind of people that Jeffrey Dahmer did. And people aren't going to notice if you're, like, deep in the fucking ghetto doing this shit. You know what, though? We did have a serial killer um, who they caught him, uh, let's see, I want to say in 2012. He was killing from 2011 to 2012. They still haven't found all of his kill kits. There was one in Wyoming in Yellowstone. His name is Israel Keys. Um, I would highly recommend looking him up and searching yes he buried kill kits all around the country he was in the military and he knew how to bury his kits how to get away with killing people they know of three that he killed but they believe there's many more and he ended up killing himself in prison so they will never know but he was doing that just 10 years ago so i i still think there is a possibility Uh, of it they say that there's at least 150 active serial killers at any given time so like right now Somebody's being serial killed? Probably, and you know, more than likely, you've walked past one on the street and had no idea. Or shook their hand, or... Or anything, you know, I... Or doing a podcast with them. Yeah. Exactly. I, I always tell my hubs, you know, don't be fucking up or I'm going to poison you with something untraceable, so... You got to keep them a little afraid. You know, and that's another kind of crazy thing. There aren't many women serial killers, you know? There's, There's not. Few. There's a few. There was a few. Um, I mean, obviously, everybody it's like knows a, about it's Eileen like a, Mornos. It's a male thing, though. But think about it, though. I mean, as women, we are built smaller. You know, we're a lot smaller. We weigh less. We can't, you know, fight off a man, you know, necessarily. I mean, you know, depending on circumstances. Like Eileen Wernos, she shot them. Easy enough to kill somebody with a gun. Right. She wouldn't have been strangling them to death. Probably. When, you think, of, when you think of a serial killer, though, you think of like knives and brutal cutting them up crazy for, for shit. For women, right? it's usually the angel of death. Right. Yep. So they're poisoning, yep. you know, at Exactly. Hospital. Like the, um, oh, oh God. Those, those nurses that would kill, like, what did she kill? Like a fucking ton of people? Like 150 plus or something. Back in well, the, and- that was a long time ago, like in the 40s or something, though, right? It, yeah, it was most. Yeah, it was a lot of the women serial killers were back. Um, I'd say like 40s, 50s, 60s. A lot of them like there was one gal she owned kind of like a bed and breakfast or like um, a home where like older people could go to like live out their last days and she would kill them, take the last of their money, buried them in the backyard. And they caught her. God, I want to say she was in like her 70s and 80s. When they finally caught her, you know, and so a lot of them, that's what they would do. They would, you know, poison people or like kill a lot of older people and collecting on their life insurance or whatever. If you you were serial killing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I like your verbs. How would it. uh, If you were serial serial killing. killing, If you were serial killing. Would you. How would you serial kill and who would you serial kill? How would you pick your victims? How would you hunt? And then how would you. Murder your victims. I I would probably pick victims like Dexter did, honestly. Bad people. Mm, you're just saying that because you... No. You can't... Here's the thing. I, I would definitely... I would probably go after men who have sexually assaulted or raped women, hurt them, been abusive to them, something like that. Um, I would definitely chop off their balls and their dick, and I'd probably feed it to them. Cook Ooh. it up and fry it and feed it to them. Mm. And then I'd probably want to poison them slowly and maybe carve them up into art like the Temptress does in Hellraiser. What's that? Um, You've thought about this like, for a while. No. Like in Dexter when, well. that, when that one guy makes like the uh, totem 
out yes. of all the bodies. Mm-hmm. You could kill like a bunch of rapey guys, uh, and have like and then sew dicks all over like his face. You know what I mean? Like Probably and do him. like some crazy uh modern art with dicks. Exactly. And you know, carve into them, maybe, you know, cut their lips off and sew it onto another person. And then sew mm-hmm. like dicks on as their lips. Yeah, exactly. So that you could literally I think call that's them. Actually dick lip. a real surgical technique. Mm. There's no way. Yeah. What? They no, can you they can they're gonna you know, take a piece of your not, dick. Why would you be down with that? I would be like, you can't use anything else. Well, I mean they they can be quite creative. Are you so. talking like dick skin? I don't know. So that's like I'm, no, I'm not talking from personal experience. Is it like experience. your lip skin, uh, or, or maybe like it's the same as or maybe it's your it's from your anus. That's what it was. Oh yeah, yeah. I want my fucking <laughs> asshole on your lips. On it's your the same. <laughs> that's fucking funny, right there. How would you serial kill? I don't know. I th- okay. I have a hard time killing I would... bugs, so I don't think I could ever. But if I'm taking the Grand Theft Auto approach to my serial killing like how i play the game i just go random kill the same person whoever's wearing the same outfit like a taxi driver kind of thing like yeah. just so go they're... on a one day spree because then you're a, a spree a killer. spree killer you're not a serial killer like but david it... berkowitz yeah he was a spree killer where he goes up and he's like oh what what movie is that where it's the dude the pimp or whatever he's selling he, he fronts his business on an ice cream stand and the dude c- walks up and he's like, oh, who the fuck are you? He's like, I'm your last customer. And shoots him. Isn't that on Taxi Driver? I'm not sure about the ice cream truck, but yeah, the rest of it, yeah. Yeah. Well, he had a little ice cream cart. Like he would, you know, the one to push around. Yeah. And then he would pimp his hose out of the ice cream truck. Or maybe it was drugs. Was he selling drugs? Probably both. Yeah. Probably. It's been a All while. Probably above. Yeah. If I was a pimp uh, in the hood, I would pimp hoes and sell drugs for sure. You got to <laughs> diversify. Diversified exactly. Capital. Mm-hmm. Multiple business endeavors, you know, got to keep that cash flow coming in. Well, right. Diversifying your funds and making sure you spread that out as widely as possible. So then on top of that, you would sell drugs, pimp hoes, and then like what else? Maybe like gambling. Uh, yeah. So you got some underground poker, right? casino. And I mean, I guess human trafficking is. Yeah, you might as well like fuck it, get it in there, get four. You could start a place like Hostel, where you know you pay to torture people. Okay, I've thought about this. What if? And you know that shit happens. I know it. You know that. You know that's what freaks me the fuck out. Shit exists. That what freaks me the fuck out is knowing that some shit like the Squid Game or Hostel. That shit happens. That shit is like real, bro. You People know are that fucking it is. doing that. You know if dudes are so, paying. No, 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 I, you know I if disagree. Are... I think it has happened, can happen. No, it doesn't happening. mean it is happening. It totally is happening. I think it's happening. It happens all the time. I bet. If people, if dudes are paying, I don't know about all the if, time. If dudes are paying to rape kids and shit, if you can go to a fucking island, say I mean, rape to and island. To rapey island. And pay to do that? You think that's all they were doing there? I'm sure you could pay to kill some fucking. I'm sure you could be rat. like, "Hey, I got twenty five thousand. You know, get me." Yeah, yeah. I want us something or... a little more freaky. I kind of want to beat her to death. And they're like, "Fuck, cool. You gave us plenty for all that. We'll get rid of the body for you." Good yep. thing this is an island and there's sharks out there. I think that shit secretly happens, which is why, I mean, if, if that kind of shit can happen, then I think we can still definitely have serial killers too. Okay, and which so if like a dude that pays to go kill like a certain type of chick Mm -hmm. and he does it like oh let's say five times four or five times does that make him a serial killer because i mean because of the transaction part does that yeah yes it totally would right i think so. transaction doesn't matter murder still even if there's other people like involved and shit that's just his methodology for that's just how he acquires his victims you know they're still if it's the same you know mo they have the same look everything you know that that is what a serial killer is i mean to to an extent you know because if you look at somebody like btk Dude, that guy. It, it didn't matter, you know. Like he, he went after women. He went after men. Families, you know, families. Unfor- he didn't really have. 
that type, which is why I think that's they also had him, a hard time to get yeah, him. That's you know? what made him hard to catch because he was so random and he, uh, like he would still do it the same way almost. He would, every yeah, time. bind, torture, kill. However, but I mean, he would also he would stalk people sometimes for upwards to a year. Yeah, you know, he was very meticulous. He was. I actually have the book that his daughter wrote about him, and it's so crazy to me that they had no idea. Like he gave every like no inkling that there was something weird about him, something wrong. You know, it's not like Ted Bundy where he'd have his moments of slipping. You know it. He hid it so well. He had his whole family, that lifestyle. He was prominent in his church, all kinds of shit, you know. And then, that, he, and then he just stopped for a while. And they like still he did speculate. Have some, there was a woman he was stalking before he got caught. And they ended up well, having yeah, to I know. her. Um, but he stopped for a while. But then somebody wrote an article and shit that, you know what I mean? And that like brought him. It brought, it, I think it brought upset him, back. him. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he sent that note to them. It was like, can you guys trace where this came yeah, from? What a, like, no. He was such a right f- now, bro. idiot. Yeah, can you trace me from a floppy disk? And they're like, no way. Why would you ask Shh, that? Here, try this. No yeah, way. Exactly. We can't track you. No, that's uh, that's impossible. I mean, it makes sense, though. It was in the 90s when they caught him. I and, can't believe and, they like, caught Alfred D'Angelo, honestly. like just the, He was the Golden State Killer. Oh. And uh, he... Oh, man, I can't remember how many he killed, but there was over, I want to say, like, he raped over 100 women oh, from cool. the 60s um, through, oh, God, I'm trying to remember. It was, I mean, it, it was a lot. They It took them a long time to catch him. Oh, it's Joseph D'Angelo. I, I got the name wrong, but yes, he 13 murders. 51 rapes and 120 burglaries between 1974 and 1986. And they just caught him in 2019, I believe. Yep. That's when they caught him. Crazy. Dude, this guy, he is in his, like, 70s in prison now. Like, old as shit. Yeah, like, he gives a fuck. I know. He probably thought he'd never get caught, though. Probably. I mean, because he, you know, stopped for a long time and then, yeah, they used DNA testing to get him. You know, it'd be an interesting show. It'd be really disturbing, though, is like the Ed Gein story. Like, oh, Ed Gein is But he's not a serial killer. because yes, he, he didn't, is. He didn't kill anybody. Yes, he did. No, he dug up bodies and kept bodies. He never killed anyone. Yes, he did. Okay. Look it up. He, he was digging up bodies. I don't recall. His, the, he, he did dig up bodies, but he killed the tavern owner, Mary Hogan, and the hardware store owner, Bernice Warden. He killed okay. them and took their bodies. Like three people. So is, did he kill them all the same way? Does that make him a serial killer? Killing essentially like more than one person okay. makes you a serial killer. You have killer to do it in, in, the, in, the, in a similar way, though. Well, he did. He killed them and he mutilated their corpses and wore their skin and turned their... Skin into lampshades and chairs and yeah. nipples into little, like, the little clicky, pulley thingies yeah. for lights He had and a stuff. belt made out of nipples. He did. And I, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, he killed a few of these women, cut them up, wore their clothes. I mean, he did the same thing to all them. Right, so, right. yes. So, yeah, he's a sick fuck. And he's a, so, I, I, I thought I, I, I thought I read that he didn't kill anyone, but. He's like the inspiration for. Um, Leatherface. Leatherface, oh, uh, Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill. Yep, from Silence of the Lambs. Yep, that oh, is the inspiration. Who, who's Hannibal supposed to be based on? I don't know if he's necessarily supposed to be based off of anybody. Maybe, I mean, maybe Jeffrey Dahmer. That's the only thing that I could think of because the let's, cannibal you know. Thing. He was more intelligent and like there's this air of sophistication where he kind of well, took yeah. that Ted Bundy con man kind of approach and mixed it in with him. I think he's probably a composite of a lot of different ones probably a bunch of them yeah so and enough that they wanted it so people couldn't tell who he was um an interesting one it's not necessarily it was more of a spree killing was uh charles starkweather stark yeah starkweather and carol ann that got Fugate. caught outside of douglas wyoming just, they, they had a shootout just outside of douglas wyoming yep. and they were the inspiration for natural born killers yes and, really? and a few other uh movies yeah so they went on like a a couple week killing spree. They murdered they eleven did... people. Um, robbing people, or were they... they started with the parents and yeah, robbing and 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 they were 
kind of want to be like rebel without a cause kind of I just watched a movie last night, that movie In Time, where it's like the Bonnie ah. and Clyde type thing. So Hannibal Lecter was inspired by Albert Fish, not Jeffrey Dahmer, okay. because that movie came out in 88. Okay, who's Albert Fish? Yeah. He was a man from New York. He was an old dude that, um, it's really gross, <laughs> but he killed probably three to nine children and he ate them. But he also would shove nails up his dick and torture himself in weird sexual ways like that. So he was a masochist. He yes, he absolutely was. He um and this was back in the nineteen like twenties and thirties. He's old, old serial killer in New York. And he like I said, you know, he killed a lot of children. Um, and became fascinated with like sexual mutilation and he would sexually mutilate himself. Weird. Very weird. Like he, I mean, the shit that he did was just, it's kind of horrifying. I think that's what fascinates people about that. It's like, yeah, you don't want to like glorify these guys, but it's hard to not be fascinated by them and wonder like, and, and that's what it is, is like we still as much research has gone into these kind of guys they just still don't really know why these dudes do what they do well think about there's it there's a lot they do know if you get well, into sure it, there is a i lot. think and i think why i find these kind of things interesting is more of the psychological psychosis side of things how can somebody be that broken what would cause a person to break like that exactly and, and there are some clear like, abuse it could be okay but how men, many it people could be... are abused that grow up to not kill people True. though which is my kind of point okay of... but also think about like if you take a severe beating from your abuser when you're a child and that gives you brain damage or something and then that is that that on top of the trauma of the mm. beatings and shit now all of a sudden you have a head injury that and they kind shifts. of implied that with Dahmer with the, a lot with of the, them had the drugs injuries. that his well, mom yeah, was he, taking. No, well, not just that, but he had a. Mm -hmm. He said he had a surgery, and after that, a hernia. A, yeah, he had a hernia surgery, and then after that, he didn't qu act quite the same anymore. So he thought maybe the anesthesia had caused some kind of brain damage. And it, I mean, it could have back then in the day. You know, a lot of them had head trauma, or they had what they call like the uh, Trinity. Of serial killers, which is, it's the three signs. When mm. they were younger, they wet the bed, they tortured small animals, and they liked to play with fire and experiment with arson. If they had those three things, those were huge signs of them possibly growing up to be that way. But it's like I've said, a lot of us, we've hit our heads as children. A lot of people have grew up in horrific lifestyles and environments, and they don't go out there and kill people. So I think... You know, yes, they've studied it a lot and have come up with some conclusions. But to me, I'm like, we still don't know why. Because look at Ted Bundy. He yeah, would have kept yeah. killing. Ed Kemper turned himself in when he was done. Like all of them, they were also similar but then different in their own ways. That it's like, how how do you determine, you know, what caused this, you know? Or how could you prevent it from kids future on you know because let's face it some kids are fucking weird okay there are kids out there that are weirdos that you're like yeah you're probably gonna kill somebody when but you then they'll older. like but it's like why though but why like what happened mm -hmm. i think it's a combination of you know what i mean some people are stronger than others in those kinds of situations some people like everyone's different and i think that's the key thing well the vastness of the human brain and what we think we know and what we actually know and like you said lo a lot of people go through abuse and then use that as fuel to become a better person exactly some people, some, Rise i mean above. Not, yeah not everybody's gonna think along that path no. some people are gonna seep deep down into despair and you know i said it on the on that dragon these balls episode hurt people hurt people yes and they then do. and then some people just really really hurt people and not just in an emotional way but they lash out and like murder people because well, they're they don't know how to process what happened to them they're maybe mentally fucked up from some kind of injury or maybe they were just born and there's some there kind of fucking chemo fire, yeah there's you know? some misfire or some kind of chemical imbalance that you know or there's just mental health 
uh, shit, schizophrenia, all kinds Bipolar, of different things. Bipolar, antisocial we, disorder. And you can see what depression does to people. Mm-hmm. And like dudes like mass murderers, I don't mean to make any excuses for those guys, but then you look at like who they were, they're like lonely type people. They're well, uh, that's... D- And it's like when you don't know love and you have to build up walls and then you eventually just snap. Well, and that's where like, and this might sound weird, but like for me, so I'm a very empathetic person. I feel a lot. I feel a lot for people. And so even when I was watching the Dahmer show with Evan Peters, there was a part of me that was just felt bad for him. So sad for him and the fact of just how lonely and desperate he was for some sort of companionship and how there was a part of me is like, man, I wish he would have had something good in his life. So he wouldn't. So we'd have know gone. what, you know, and it yeah. was, it Did was, you see the one where he, where he had the, the blind, the deaf guy yet. Yes. And it was hard for me because at one point I was forgetting that I was watching a show based on true events. Cause I was like, Oh, that's so cute. How they're writing notes back and, and forth. And he's going to save other. him. He's going to save him. And yeah, it's yeah. like, and it but was so it, cute, and then I was like, oh, but you have to realize, like, this isn't just a show. This really happened. He really did this to somebody, you, and, it, and it's hard. You know, um, I'm glad that the story did so he could tell the story of the victim, as so many of these stories are all about the what monster, they did, yeah. but not the people who they hurt. And to to feel those impact, I think that's, a, that, that's what makes the Dahmer show so hard to watch. But I think that's an important fact it's that you got the victim's point of view in it. We get we get their story. We get to see a little like when the cops were talking to him in the interview. It's like, no, say their name. Oh, that was the hitchhiker. No, this guy has a name. Say and it would call them by the name. Yep. Mm-hmm. But then interesting later, we see that Dahmer has kept all their driver's license. Yeah, he knows their mm-hmm. names. So he, knows he knows their, their names. names. You know, he it's... would look through the licenses and, you know, he had a big stack. He had yeah. a big stack. And, and uh, those photos. And... Did you know the ones they put in the show? Are they actual ones? Those are the real ones, yeah. And the cop really did they don't find actually... them and went, oh, shit, this is real. This that is real. Yes, that was legit. That cop found those photos and went, oh, fuck. You know, like, yeah. oh, my God. I mean, you can Google them. The photos they use in the show are the ones. It looks you can like, see them. to me, it looked like for him, a lot of what he did was based around just, like, wanting people to not leave. He yeah, it's like the, the reason. The he reason a he really, he really sex doll that couldn't leave him. Well, he really dug the deaf guy, and he, and he really had sort of a connection with that guy. And then when it was, you know, he they hung out for a while, and then but as soon as they had like sex, mm-hmm. uh, and then dude's like, oh, I got to go to work, and he's like, uh, you. He didn't believe that he would come back. It, and it was always like, and even the first guy at the end, or at the in the first episode, which is actually his last victim, uh, he's like, why does everybody always try to leave? You know what I mean? And it was like, yep. the <laughs> only way he could keep, <laughs> the only way he could keep people around him is if he could force them to be. And then they also said that he, at his grandma's yard, he would scatter the crushed up bones of his victims all over the yard because he liked to feel them around him. Yeah, he kept that's why he kept parts of everybody that he could. If he could keep, you know, their skull or some of their bones, bury them. I mean, he did it with the hitchhiker too, you know. He He had a bunch of full skeletons in drawers. Mm-hmm. Yep, he had he would co- sort the their collecting of, of serial killers is an interesting subject in itself. What trophies these people kept. Well, because look at Ted yeah, That Bundy. was that for what him. He, that for him didn't. was keeping. He didn't. I think he kept maybe some jewelry and maybe some driver's licenses, but for the most part, he would kill them, bury them in one place, and drive their clothes and shit somewhere else, and just yeah. dump them out of his car because he'd get so freaked out. He didn't keep a lot. Not all of them do that. Yeah, but for for um. Jeffrey Dahmer, it was about keeping them near him. Well, yeah, and that's... It wasn't so much about having a trophy as it was as, like, he wanted that's to feel like That's why he ate he, them, you know, because it's like, oh, they're a part, a part of they're a part of me, me now. now. And I, you know, and that's what I think makes him so sad. Like, I think he is the Des- saddest serial killer out of them. Yes, his desperate loneliness. It just, it breaks my heart for him that he felt so desperate and lonely that he... 
resorted. He to felt killing like that people. was the only way to keep people near is to. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's and I feel too, especially, you know, for the black community and, you know, minorities and just anybody of color that, you know, was affected by that. You know, it's it's unfortunate that that is what was aesthetically pleasing to Jeffrey Dahmer. And at the time, nobody really gave a shit about them or AIDS or anything like that. And so it ended up his aesthetic worked to his advantage, yeah. essentially, you, you know, you know, it's like uh, what you were just saying about like what was aesthetically pleasing to him. And I talked to somebody and they were like, uh, we were kind of talking about um, like, cause you know, in the show uh, when they're, when the cops are interviewing him, right. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, and they're like, and the, the black cop gets kind of pissed and he's like, oh, and you, ch you chose these guys because you wouldn't be caught because of their race and shit. And he's like, what, what? No, no. And like, it's kind of interesting to me because it seemed like in the show at the, at least that that kind of didn't even cross his mind. And like, I really that's don't just think what it, he was attracted. I was going to say, and I don't think it did. I truthfully believe that he was just attracted and you look at that, you look at that, and then also how not careful he was. So for him to think that far ahead, I don't, I don't think makes sense. I think it totally was. It's just he was attracted to them, and then he wanted them to stay. Well, yeah, because, I mean, to me, I feel like if if he hated, you know, any of the minorities or people of color or whatever, he wouldn't have gone to the extent that he did of his taking pictures and trying to turn them into his zombie. Like, if he hated black people, to me, he would have just killed them and been done with it, you know? It, a more mutilated or... Yeah, a little always... bit more mutilated and, you know, not the fact or, that... Or he could have went for homeless and killed him exactly. right there on the street and walked off and, you know... Exactly, but he went after guys he that he He made it he very thought, personal. Yes, he went after guys that he thought were beautiful and just gorgeous to him, and it's like, so... You know, that's who he was sexually attracted to, you know, but I, I but I think, though, at especially at the time that day and age, I can see where they looked at it and went, well, fuck that. You know, that's not that, you know, you you lived in the slums like and it's he's like, well, that's all I could afford, which was the truth. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah. and the cop was very upset and he was like, oh, you moved in there because you knew it'd be easy, easy pickings. And mm -hmm. and he's so it is interesting is like it. it that's what they made it out to be, or a lot of groups made it out to be, like, in during that well, time. Well, that's why he got and killed in like, prison. Yeah. Not only that, but, well, you got to watch the last well, couple episodes, because no, they get into that. He tormented and that, people. I know he shaped up his food to look like feet and bones and no, covered I know, it with I, ketchup and blood. Well, not just that, but this guy was also mentally ill, the guy that killed him. He mm -hmm. was schizophrenic and... Thought he was the hand of God, basically. Like, he was there to deliver vengeance, well, and this, God's justice to... Well, and this guy that killed him, he watched all of it happen on the news and didn't go to prison until 1992. So he saw everything that went down before he even went into the same prison as Jeffrey Dahmer. So he already had... In the show, they make it look like he researches it while he's in there. Like, he didn't know at first, and then... No, he knew. He, he knew all of it, and... Yeah, just in the show, they make it look like he researches it through in prison. And I and I mean, maybe he did research more of it, but I mean, he didn't go to prison until 1992, so he was around to see all of that. And right, you know, so a lot of people think that, um, you know, he he killed him because of everything he saw on the news, and he was extracting his vengeance, which. I believe that Dahmer was tormenting people in prison so he would get somebody to kill him. I really truly believe that. I think so that. too. I think so too. I think he they wouldn't to die. They, they wouldn't um they wouldn't let him or like you uh How he asked for the electric chair. Yeah, he, they they wouldn't give him the death penalty because it was in what was it Milwaukee or mm -hmm. something. So he couldn't they wouldn't give him the death sentence. So yeah, I I thought that too watching the show is like why else would he get all cocky and act like a fucking tool and shit unless he was baiting somebody to kill him and that's true well and what is it that he says when the cops get him he says i deserve to die for my actions oh, he yeah. really did say that in real life and i yeah. think i think a lot of them ended up just being like you gotta kill me or you know you have the complete opposite like ted bundy who will do literally anything and everything and bait you to get you to keep him alive until you're finally like well 
you know, you're done. Like, uh, didn't he also on his deathbed or uh, before his execution want to give out more names of more bo- where more bodies were? Yeah, they. Are- no, he didn't give out more names. He was just going to tell them their locations because there was a lot. Um, but yeah, always to, trying to always trying to yeah, play the kept, game. Kept trying to he push. He was always it trying off. to play the game. It was like a show for him. His, like he was like a showman. He felt like he was like that, on the uh, stage, spotlight on him, and he's. He thought he was untouchable because of the information and, he had. Until I think he knew it's like, well, you're gonna die. And so his last interview, I have the book. Of and it, he thought and he he just thought he was smartest. He thought he was the smartest guy in the room. And he thought he was. And I think, I think he did things fairly smart until he got to Florida and then it's like he just went ape shit. You know what I'm saying? Like he he just went on a spree. Oh, when he went to that campus? Well he went to the campus. He killed that 14 year old girl, there was you like, know? There was like four girls in that that one little night where he went through the campus and like you know, room to room killing. He went chicks. to the like, what is it like the the Phi Beta Kappa house? Yeah, um, something like yeah, that. Yeah, and I want to say he killed three or four there, and then he went to that one gal's house and like bludgeoned her. The same in the night. Head. The yep. same night down the road and, and shit. She, she didn't. Did she die? I can't remember. I don't one think, of them survived. I believe one of them in the house survived. I don't think the chick that because she was the one that he bit on the ass, and I I don't think she survived, and that's part of how they caught him. Which, these days, they say that that bite mark analysis is just hokey bullshit. It's not as... Yeah, that it, was, it wasn't it was as... Concrete as, like, DNA. Yeah. That's and, and real, some are that's, even saying DNA is not as, as, as scrupulous or as reliable. as reliable as what they make it out to be. Well, a lot of the things they use, but nothing's going to be 100%, and you can, like, discredit those things, but, like, clearly they work you know, most of the time or a lot of the time, enough to make it worth doing. You know what I mean? Maybe not the bite mark shit. If that's not backed up by science and it can't... I mean, you could totally frame somebody that way. That is very true, but also with him, you know, the same fibers that were found on the young 14-year-old girl that he killed, they found on him, you know. Well, yeah, I'm not saying he was innocent. I'm just saying, like, in general, you could... If it... I mean, yeah, if you can't, some of that stuff really works, and maybe that one seemed to work for a while, but, you know. Well, it's like with a lie detector test. They have that proven, shit's bullshit, That too. shit is total bullshit. They're like, we can't, you cannot have, like, oh, this is evidence based on how they, you know, these results came out. They, they can't use that they at can, all anymore. Because people can trick it. They know how to trick it. Well, not only that, they but it can give you a false. Low. Can anybody... Even if you did nothing wrong, and this is proven, if you get in and the cops sit you down and start questioning you, you get nervous. Oh, I would if they gave me a lie detector. It, it matters. Even if I didn't do anything, my heart would be racing. It doesn't matter. And I, when I was in the military, uh, during basic training, we they grabbed a handful of us to go through and do like uh, training for new FBI agents, CIA agents, and all that bullshit. And they were doing like a interrogation type shit and so they had me do this mock-up murder where i climbed in through this window like strangled this mannequin and then like i had to go through every step and do this and then they took me into the interrogation room and then i had to sit there and have a lie detector and they 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 had me in there for fucking like three or four hours trying to get me to confess and uh they never did break me, but they got me on the lie detector. But I mean, yeah, I kind of wonder if Mike. But also, Mike I was Groves... starting to feel that you know when, where they it, just that over time it starts to break you down. You get tired and you just want to get it over with. Mm-hmm. So I almost wanted to confess by the end, just so I could. So they would leave be you done with alone. it. Yeah, Imagine if that was a it. real life situation and you're just completely stressed. How to make a murderer. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I mean, that's a perfect example of cops using their power to influence to saw, just write it off inside. I mean, at least that's the way it looks well, in even, so many different ways, well, you dude, know, but uh, with DNA testing now too. so many men have been like, 
set free from prison and shit because they realize, oh, you didn't do this, even though we claimed that you did, you know. And so I think, I think it has showed, you know, that, um, you know, there, there's got to be way more to it than just a lie detector test or, oh, this kind of fits, you know, like they kind of fit this profile. Like it's, it's got to be them, you know. They would, they would just be desperate to lock somebody up. Well, yeah, you got to look at individual motives of the cops that fucking arrest some of these people. Yep. And it's like, what's he getting out of the deal? Who or watches like, the watchman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, uh, you got to take shit like this on a case-to-case basis because everybody's different, like I said. And, like, everybody's got different motivations. You know, cops looking for a fucking promotion. I need uh, you need to catch get a real big case and just close that bitch. And yeah, frame somebody because fuck it. Elections way easier, coming up here. Way Make easier than happy. finding. Way easier than wasting time and resources finding the actual killer, especially if it's not like, you know, rich white people that are getting killed. It's fine. We'll just put somebody up there that. So who do you think is the most? I hate to say it, would, <laughs> or vulnerable demographic now. Uh, now. Like nowadays, I if- think I don't think that changes. It's downtrodden. Poor minorities. I'm, think I'm gonna so. think homeless. I they're still. I would think homeless. I would definitely think anybody that is a sex worker. I mean, honestly, it, it's sex. I mean, that is very dangerous work. I mean, that's what Eileen Wernos did, and she got attacked and raped. And and I think in her, you know, first killing, it was self defense. And then after that, she killed six men in like the course of a year. However, so you know, so I agree with that. I think it could be. The minorities, the poor, the sex workers, I think even, you know, look at me. I am somebody, I am a tiny, like, 5'3", little person, probably don't, like, look like I could fend off somebody very well. However, I would fight for my life, absolutely. You know, but I think, you know, even, like, the women, like, look at the ones that Ted Bundy went after. They were between, like, 5'1", 5'3", 120 pounds tiny little things you know and i think it's people that look like they could be overpowered that they go after yeah you know or it could be like in jail could be the the sex offender group that is always that is being targeted very true you know as your your um fictional serial killer version of yourself (laughs) (laughs) it went after you know abusive men or, or you know, the rapists, and you got to wonder how many of those vigilantes are out there. There's got to be at least one, right? <coughs> it's out there killing fucked up people. You need to search the news. Who's, who's? Oh, there have been Dexter type killers. Just look oh, it up. Yeah, yep. that would be sick. You can't hate that guy, right? I mean, that's you why can, we love but... that. That's why we love that show. I mean, it's why we love Dexter. But then, is that okay? Sure because he's killing bad people, though. Sure it is. If they're so we're raping into fucks, the the Batman versus the you know the, the I think boys. It, I think if it's if he's raping and doing super fucked up shit and not getting caught, and this dude knows for a fact, and he's killing fucked up or, you know, you look at the justice system. People get away with like crazy fucked up sex crimes, basically they... all the time. They get very little sentence, and then they get out and keep doing it. So then eventually one of these victims family member or a victim or something is going to just be like fuck it and start taking these fools out and i'm and i got no problem with power i got no problem with that i think you know in like a comic book kind of way you know the serial somebody that would position to take out people of power almost like punisher in a way yeah Yeah. you know that but then again because those are the people that you can't touch and you know the 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 big fat fat cat politician that gets away with going to murder resorts on on uh, on holiday to take care of himself, you know, right? Mm-hmm. You know is, and you know it's that veil of fiction and, and reality and what if, mm-hmm. you know, is 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 it possible? Yes, you know, um, there was a show, uh, murder. It was about murder tourism on Netflix, or no, no, um, not not murder, <laughs> but like. You go tour, um, like the uh, Three Mile Island or uh, um, 
Oh, I got you places where shit went down. But he went to this one resort and he was like, and there's like, I want to kill a cow. It's like, I want to kill something. And they brought up a cow for him to just a machine gun down. Okay. And, and you he think didn't. People won't do that for other people. No, like but it, I, I'm, I'm saying like, they were like the people that were in charge of like, uh, sh- sure. Okay. Uh, I mean, even there at like that, they were still like, uh, they weren't sure that they were going to do it. And then they, act, yeah. So, and then they did. So yeah, totally. If they're willing to do that, there are people that are totally willing to sell you some chick. They snatched off the fucking street. So you yeah. can go kill her as long as you pay them the right amount. Fuck it. Almighty dollar. My friend, nobody, nothing is off limits in this world. And that is the fucked up thing. Well, and maybe, <clears throat> So there are currently That's nine it. serial active serial cases in 2022. Oh, really? Uh huh. Like different. So this is okay. Now this is the website I'm looking at. Why is are you serial excited about killer that? <laughs> I know, because I find them. It is interesting. So I find them so fascinating. I know a lot of people don't, but I do. I a lot I of people do. do though. Long Island serial killer. New York serial killer has been. <coughs> excuse me. For twenty, he's been on there for twenty years. Um, yeah. Uh huh. Who? Oh, Zodiac. They never caught Zodiac. Nope, they sure didn't. <clears throat> Although they did eventually. Um, what do you think happened to him? I truthfully believe I. I think he was on the police force or something like that. Um, and you a think lot, he died though? I. I think so. Probably at this point, I would say so. He probably died, or I think he got to be like. Joseph D'Angelo, the Golden State Killer, where he got too old to be doing these things anymore. Because that's why Joseph D'Angelo quit. He can rob people and break into their homes and tie them up and do all that stuff anymore. Just retire. That's what I think. Well, yeah, because they're going to get to a certain age <coughs> or point, you know, where they can't do that anymore. You know, they, they don't have the strength. Uh oh, there's serial killer outside. You know, it was really awful when I was dog sitting for you and reading the Ted Bundy book by, um, what was it? it, What was her name? I don't remember, but I was always scared that he was going to come get me, even though I knew he'd been dead for years. (laughs) I was still like, it's going to happen. So, you know, there's somebody just like him out there right now. Dude, sometimes that shit, it it does freak me out because it's, they are more terrifying than like horror movies because these people really exist. You know, you can watch Jason and Freddie and Michael Myers, and I can go to sleep just fine because I know it's this actor in a mask doing this, whereas these people were authentically 100% real, and you just never know what's going to happen to you or what kind of crazy person you're going to meet. And that, I think that's the scary part of it and also the weird, like, fascinating thrill of it. Do you ever catch yourself looking at the people around you and wondering if they're one? All the time. Like people that you work with or like just like you're in the mall or the store and you're like, does that guy kill folk? Like, there are times, that yeah, that I definitely, I'm one of those, okay. Do that, is, do that sometime, Bill. This is going to sound weird, but I'm and one just of those look people, at people. Like, so my hubs, he'll look at people. He's the type of person that looks at people and be like, I bet this person smells like, you know, ass and feet sweat or something. Whereas I'm the type of person that looks at people and go. You know, I bet they like to get pissed on in the bedroom. Like, I'm the type that, like, looks at people and go, this is their kink, you know? But sometimes I go, oh, they could be a killer. Yeah. But I'm usually just guessing random people's kinks on the street, you know? Like, oh, he likes sucking toes. Or... <laughs> and, and and you gotta, and it's, like, people that you would think would be normal. Like, Bill, I bet he serial kills. I bet he does, too. Mm-hmm. Mosquitoes. All the mosquitoes. Fuck those mosquitoes. Vash. With a vengeance. Yeah, fuck those little bastards. With Flying hypodermic needles. <laughs> Walking dad joke, this guy. Where are we at? We're we're in Casper, Wyoming. No, where are we at? On- <laughs> we're about a minute. What did I just say? Hour, Walking hour dad joke. Did you know serial killer killed a gal up here? A few. Uh, yeah, well, there was... Um, what, what was the one guy that... I guess he wasn't a serial killer, but he raped the two sisters, threw them off the bridge. Yeah, over Back in the day. Over. Yeah. That was pretty fucked up. Yeah. That whole story is super fucked because that story's very one sad. sister became a cop or whatever, and then she, 30 years later, went and threw herself back off the same bridge and killed herself. She crawled up with two broken legs, climbed up. 
it's amazing what the human body will do to survive. You know what I mean? To just, just to go, fight just for to your go life. throw herself back off there thirty years later. That's what I think is really sad. That, I, but I mean, how? Because you never let that go. She never let that go. Well, I was going to say, how would you get over something like that? And I kind of, I mean, before we end, I, I'm kind of curious about your guys' opinions, you know, because me me and the hubs kind of have differing views, whereas I very much enjoy the shows. And I like, you know, I loved the Ted Bundy tapes. I loved how informative they were, honestly. And, and so I'm excited for the Gacy tapes and the Dahmer tapes, whereas on my hubs' end, he thinks it's fucked up. And goes, you know, well, what about the families that are being affected by this and horrified? Yeah. And and I totally agree, but at the same time, too, it's public record. I think the Dahmer show did a really good job of that, like Bill was saying. It's like well, they didn't tell the families they were doing it. Well, especially in the later, yeah, you don't have to. Uh, no, you don't. Like I said, it's public record. They don't have especially to. Especially in shit. the later episodes, during the trial and shit, they really get. Yeah, and during the show, they really show the the family's point of view. They show the victim's point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, so you hear their names a lot, and not only that, by the end of the show, they show every victim at the end of the you know on the screen. Um, and they make a point of not glorifying these guys in that show, even though they're like kind of fucking doing that. It's kind of a yeah. That is a weird. You're sending me mixed signals here. Yeah, it is. It's very, excuse me. It's very mixed signals, I feel, when watching anything like that. Because even when they did Evil Genius, you know, or not Evil Genius, I don't remember what the Ted Bundy movie was called on Netflix, but they used somebody like oh, Zach it was... Efron to play him. You know what I mean? Like they'll take somebody who's considered very hot and pretty in Hollywood. And yes, I know that. Ted Bundy at the time was considered a good looking dude, but they take almost these sex he, he symbols. He was no, nowhere near as good looking as Zach Efron, though. I don't yeah, know I they're, know. I mean, Zach Efron. You're killing me with that. Like, come on, bro. That dude is perfect. I know. Exactly. However, um, you know, they do, I think because they do stuff like that, and like even with Evan Peter. So I think people romanticize it in a weird messed up way because i even read this meme where somebody put can we stop casting evan peters a serial killer so i can find him hot without feeling weird about it you know, and stuff like that Has you know been a, another serial killer before? oh yeah on um uh american horror story and stuff he was like a kid that did like a mass high school shooting um uh, you know and some other stuff like that but he's always played these weird freaky killer roles and he it's like fucking God. He slays at I think, oh my I God. think he did Dahmer except like his walk and even like the talk with his constant like um like mm. if he walked up to you and was like talking to you, you'd be like mm. I'd be super creeped out. I'd be like, can you just back up a little like <laughs> yeah. six feet, man? Space bubble. <laughs> well you're yeah. safe. Yeah, that's true. I'm from safe. Him. I'd be safe from Bundy too. I don't got dark hair. <laughs> Me and Bill technically should be safe too, because we're white. What, and that's what? fucked up to say, but like we said, he liked killing. And every, I mean, people have their MO, you know? It's, it is what it is. And it, I think it will. And I would fucking, oh my God, I'd fucking high kick that fucker in the face. Dude, A I pow, said- I'm not drinking <laughs> shit, fuck face. Dude, I've talked to so many people because, you know, they, they will always joke around with me. And, you know, what if, you know, somebody snatched you or whatever? And I say I'd fight for my life and I'd scratch the shit out of them to where Scream. all their DNA is under. I, I know I am a tiny little person and i would i would throw my like all into it i would literally fight for my life scratch this fuck out of them get all that dna evidence under your what mouth. killed me about that shit is he'd be like go drink it just j- just drink it what's in it nah <laughs> and they're like oh okay <laughs> it's like fucking come on like as soon as you hand me that cup and go let's drink it together how about no how about no yeah, how about probably? But then again, not? if you go, hey man, I, I'll give you a hundred bucks uh, to come back to my Dude, apartment. Think about it. And 50 take pictures or of you. Hundred bucks back then to just take a few photos. It was a lot for them. And think about how many of them were struggling in the yeah. areas. They, you know what I like mean? You said, like, like we said, it isn't a. It was a different time, and I also think, you know, I, I think being gay. I mean, obviously, it wasn't as accepted back then, and so they probably had this. Who was Cloak and dagger type. Well, and they had this good looking dude who was like, yeah, I want to take you home and take pictures of you and do all this. And I'm sure a lot of people in the gay community back then, they were looking for that. You know, that and, connection and that relationship that wasn't, it's not as a um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? You know, like today you have all the dating apps and it's easier to meet people and stuff. Whereas there, you know, and it's super cool to be gay now. Exactly. Whereas back then it wasn't. You had specific like gay clubs you had to go to and they were all kind of segregated. And whereas now I think it's easier. And back then, I think all of them were just they wanted to find somebody that would care about them somebody and love them. that didn't want to delouse after seeing them. Exactly. Exactly. You know, they just wanted to be loved and cared about. And I'm sure he gave them that illusion of it, which drew them in. And, you know, it's unfortunate what he ended up doing to all them. You know, mm-hmm. it's very sad. You know, all this shit's kind of sad. And, and no matter way, what way you look at it, everybody, even the killers, they're they went through fucked up shit to be this way. Well, they did, And it's too. like, and it so makes it... A lot of trauma. All of it's sad as fuck, because, like I said, hurt people, hurt people, hurt people, hurt people, hurt people, and it just goes on and on and on. Well, and that's what makes me, you know, like, sad for them in a way, which I've obviously... Like, I've been berated for saying, like, yes, I feel bad for these killers, and it's like, but I, I only do in the sense of whatever it was that caused them to, to just have that switch in their mind flip that they go, okay, like I need to kill people. Like this is the only way I can feel better or get sexual release or whatever. And it it just, it makes me sad that they. They're a product of their past, their environment, their. Yes. And it caused them to go so far off the deep end. At some point in these dudes lives a lot of times they were the victim and then they turned exactly. into exactly the, and then they, they had they to turn into it. the monster so how do you i mean so the ultimate sociological question is how do you break that cycle how do you break the cycle i think, cycle I think of, people of do trauma? it all the time like she said a lot of people go through trauma mm-hmm. so a lot I, of people go through horrible shit and become the best people you could ever meet yeah but that's so, so like, how do we make sure that you know if you, it's you a, our friend or you know somebody that we know that we are reflecting how they can transcend the situation rather than being I devoured think, by it. I think all we need to do and like the best you can do is just give people love when you see they need it. I think give people love and, and care I think, and listen to their hurt. And, and I think realize that, you know, none of us get out of life unscathed. And I think we all have our own. We all have some sort of mental, I don't, you know, illness, issues, whatever you want to call it. All of us are a little messed up in some way. Or another, and I think being able to be open about that and talk about it and get the talking, help, you know, because a lot face it, a lot of these serial killers were around. We'll say from like seventies to like eighties, early nineties before mental health and a lot of therapy and getting help for it was a thing. You used to be so it was such a stigma to be like, well, you're fucking crazy. Well, they, yeah, to even show weakness, you got to think in the eighties and sixties, seventies, eighties, even the nineties, you. You know, dudes weren't supposed to cry. You're not supposed to talk about the shit that yeah. hurts you on the inside. It's like, dude, quit being a fucking pussy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that is what's kind of great about the time we live in is because it is so much more mainstream and like acceptable for a man to fucking just sit there and cry like on TikTok and pour his feelings out or talk to his friend and his homie will go you know, I hear you, bro, and, like, have his fucking back. Give him a shoulder to cry on as opposed to call him on, calling him a fucking pussy or a fag or some shit because he wants he has to cry. So it's like... Yep. Or, or you can just tell your story. Yeah, my fucking dad used to beat my ass. I fucking, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like a lot of the time, loneliness and feelings of inade- inadequacy are what fuel this kind of shit. Well, and a in lot the first of times, place. so many of us, we've gone through the same things. It's like you, you can talk to people. And, and nowadays, you know, a lot of people have gone through the same thing and you can relate and talk to each other. Whereas, you know, like we said back then, it just men didn't talk about that. You had to hold your feelings in. And, you know, even so, like when I was watching the Gacy tapes in the first episode, this guy talks about when he stayed the night at Gacy's house after partying and Gacy was threatening him with a knife and telling him to take down his pants. And this guy was sobbing like a baby. And he even said, I was an 18 year old kid. I wasn't going to go to the cops and tell him that a grown man made me cry and forced me to take my pants off at knife point. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? I'll look like a bitch. 
Exactly, exactly, you yeah. know, and so, and that doesn't help either is this whole stigma of like, well, you can't talk about that, you know, or they probably would have called him, <clears throat> you know, a homo back then or whatever, you know, because that was still even John Wayne Gacy. He got arrested for sodomy. Like that shit was illegal back then too. You couldn't yeah. be open about that, you know? And <clears throat> I think <clears throat> openness and love and understanding is really what can help people. And just the fact that we have resources now, we have therapies and so not only that, we have apps like TikTok, we have apps like Facebook, places you can Fuck TikTok. Uh, you, well, that's fine. I mean, it's helping us, so you could go ahead and say that. No, no, I just. Yeah, but, uh, anyways, I think what, I having wonder... having that outlet, even if you don't have it in you to talk to somebody, but maybe you have it in you to put a video out there that puts your feelings out there, and maybe that reaches other people, or you you know you can go through some shit, become stronger on the other side, and then you can reach out to people through these kind of mediums. And I think that helps too, is you don't necessarily have to go see a therapist to find people that you can relate to and realize that you're not alone in your feelings. It can feel like that when yeah. you're deep in your despair and you just feel like, you know, th I'm the only one that feels like this. I'm the, I, no one will understand me. But when you find somebody that you may never meet in real life, but they're saying the things that are in your head, Mm -hmm. And then that that can be all it takes and be like, look, I know exactly what you're feeling. I came out on the other side better. You can too. And like that's maybe that's all it takes is for somebody to go, you're going to be okay. Exactly. You just need you're somebody gonna be to okay. give you that support. This is, it doesn't stay like this forever if you don't want it to. Exactly. Yeah. And that it's like endless cycles of fucked up misery and depression dude i said it on that dragon these balls episode it's a vortex that will fucking suck you down to the bottom and you'll never escape and it's hard but, you know like but all it takes is somebody to reach out and give you a hand and pull you out of that shit and like give you a little encouragement give you a little love Maybe even just a fucking hug. Dude, For I feel like that's all we just need in this world. Is, is we love. Just want, we just want to be loved and accepted for it who we are. It sounds fucking corny. It sounds it corny does, and but, cliche, but really, if we all just loved each other a little fucking more, man. Exactly. It's, you know, there, there's too much hate, and, and we just need to love each other for who we are and and just be there for each other, you know, instead of trying to alienate and isolate everybody that's different from us in today's day and age. Or we need to come them, to, or, or judge, judge them. them for the actions they take. Maybe look at their past and see why they do the things they do. Maybe show them a different way. Learn a little so, bit more understanding. I got a question for you. So going back to Dahmer for a second, there was a scene where Dahmer was almost going to confess a little bit to his dad. Yes. Yeah, and about, his dad, his dad, uh, and about you know about his sexuality and also that like. And, and he's and like, is it about is it about, is it about sex stuff? And he gets uncomfortable. And, yeah, and just and changes the subject real quick. And then it's that same thing. So if, uh, they, if, he, if he had those kind of outlets, would that have changed? And not to blame so. his father um, or the things that he did, but as as a hindsight, how to look at I, these kind of treatment? I, I, I think, I think yes. so. I think if he would have admitted to his dad, "Hey, I, I'm gay," and I think that that was right after the hitchhiker, right? I think so. Yes, he killed him. I I think even if he would have just admitted to the hitchhiker and stuff as well, I think... Not even that. It's just to be able to know, because that's probably what pushed him even further down the path, is going, oh, nobody's going to listen. And his grandma I, I gotta telling him. Yeah, and I got to keep this all in. grandma being like, you got to go to church and meet a nice young gal and all this yeah. stuff. And it's like, well, sorry, Grams, but... He's gay. It's like having to His bottle grandma it. grandma trying to hook him up with a girl. Oh, this nice little girl. It's like, yeah, that would. Having that would to work. bottle it up and not having an outlet other than it, the extreme mm -hmm. is exactly what it is. It's yep. like, yes, if his dad would have listened to him and we, and he's like, I got these weird fucking thoughts. Like, I think I need help. And he tried to get help. And I'm sure, he did. I'm sure if he knew he had the help he was seeking. Then he would have been fine. And I think a lot of them didn't. They didn't have the help. You know, even look at Ed Kemper. His mom, he was a big dude. He was like, what, six, seven, six, nine, some shit like that. 
When he was 13, his mom locked him in the basement because she's like, oh, you're a big kid. You're going to rape your sisters and like locked him down there and just fucked up shit like that. That it's like, yeah, you probably and are then, the reason why then, he killed these girls yeah. and then he had to murder you. So it's and like. And then, and then, yeah, made him rapey by convincing them him that he was a rape. By causing a him at yeah, 13 years old to be like, you're going to rape your sisters just because he was a bigger even, kid. Even, even if. Trauma, yes. trauma upon and trauma. And I think it's, you know, I'm not saying like you have to put all the blame on the parents, but I think a lot of it goes to in them. That, I think in that, I think in that moment you do. I think you do. And even, you know, with Lionel Dahmer, I, I feel for him. I don't know if you guys have watched interviews of the real man. He, it, it's very sad. He cries a lot and is just, you know, he wished he would have done more for his son. And it also... It makes me very sad for some of the parents, even like Ted Bundy's mom, who when he died and they were all, you know, cheering outside the prison and stuff, she's like, well, I hope you're happy. You know, my kid died. And it's like, we have to think about that, too, that somebody out there that their family loves them despite what they did. And it's a very hard, like, juxtaposition, like, all around, you know, because it's like you want to hate them on one end, but at the same time, too... You got to look at it objectively and you see everything. You do have everything. to look at it objectively. You look what at if... it from a bird's eye view and go, this is, you know, just a product of shitty cycles happening over and over. And yep. it's all, it's like just shit stacked upon shit on top of shit until it festers. Some, yeah, something yep. ex- like fucking blows, man. And that's what, like, you know, and like I said, I don't want to. Yeah, it's it's hard like the mass shootings and shit. There's a reason it's happening all the time. It's like the serial killers got replaced by dudes that just go fuck it and all. I'm gonna want to shoot up schools. Yeah, you know? and, and, it's and it's like, it's, you know, I I mean not to be that person or get controversial, but the issue isn't the guns. It's their mental health and the fact that they have access to them, and that's something we got to look at. You know, and, that, and in most cases, these guys are extremely introverted. Isolated. 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 isolated lonely yeah lonely it's so fuck. easy to happen in this social media so, age and so like when we it say and that's that's if you give somebody just give somebody a chance to fucking talk it's like if you gotta wonder how many of these guys if somebody would have just be, listen to them be, been their friend yes if they would have had a friend or been shown any ounce of love in their life so like when the hitchhiker kissed him Instead of saying, whoa, what the fuck? Be like, hey, dude, that's not me. Instead, I, I don't know that. I don't know. If that, at that point, he was, he was already. He already had it in his head to kill that guy. That's true. Uh, I, would he say, was I would say he didn't. He said he what, he didn't intend to kill him or the guy in the hotel. The hitchhiker was, he an was accident. leaving and he, he didn't, want, yeah, and he didn't again, want him to leave. So when he hit him in the head and then flipped out about killing well, him. And he called him a faggot. He did call him a faggot too. Yeah. So he, I don't think he intended to. But then once he realized this guy was going to leave him and not stay, I think he panicked and then went, oh shit. Cause even the, the hotel dude, I mean, to me, I feel like he's telling the truth about those because he admitted to all the other killings and what he did. If he really didn't intend to kill these two, like, why, yeah, would, he, why would he lie? Why it would he lie he... about that? You yeah, know, that I makes mean, a good point. That's a good point. Cause he was honest about everything else, you know? Yeah. It was like a, and like he said, he was blackout drunk a lot of these killings. And he accidentally drugged himself when he killed the guy in the hotel. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, like they showed in the show, you know, it, it was all true, you know. And I think that just goes to show that we we just need to offer kindness in this world, honestly. Yeah, we need just, to be kind to people. And like you said, just just show them love, you know. it's We're all just looking for a little bit of that. Like in, Yeah, instead of judging somebody on surface level, maybe try to get to know them and find out. Yeah, like I said, it's. It, I think it all comes from understanding, some sort of trying to understand each other. Yeah, for sure. Most definitely. I think it's a good note to uh, end things on. I agree. For sure. So... Um, so what do we got for next week? We're going to do... I think we're going to try and do The Last Ronin. Okay. Yeah. So Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin. Um, have you read that? I have not. Oh, uh, well. I'll read... So Raiden for that one? Yep. Is he... We got to get a book, get them booked in, but... Okay. Um... More Halloween, uh, Halloween. Yeah, madness. I was just trying to think. We get we should do horror movies after that, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That and, would be a good one. Yeah, that would be good. Um, like we said at the beginning of the episode, go visit thecomiczone.com. If you enjoyed this episode, we have 
close to fucking 70 now on there, so there's plenty yeah. to choose from. Uh, we got TikTok, we got Instagram, we got Facebook and the group, of course, where we share tons of memes. All the memes, all the tasty memes. And of course, go check out Dragon D's Balls, of course. Of course, of course, because it's the best. For reals. It is for realsies. The best. Give your neighbors some love and don't be serial killing. Peace. <laughs>